Ben, there's been a lot of talk about a housing bubble, particularly you know from the Fed, from all sorts of, of uh, uh, different places. Can you give us your view as to whether or not there is a housing bubble out there? Well, unquestionably, housing prices are up quite a bit. I think it's important to note that uh, fundamentals are also very strong. We've got a, a growing economy, uh, jobs, incomes. We've got very low mortgage rates. Uh, we've got uh, demographics uh, supporting uh, housing uh, growth. We've got uh, restricted supply in some places. So it's certainly understandable that prices would go up, would go up some. Um, I, I don't know whether prices are exactly where they should be, but I, I think it's uh, fair to say that uh, much of what's happened is supported by the strength of the economy. Tell me, what is the worst case scenario? So we have so many economists coming on our air and saying, oh, this is a bubble and it's going to burst and this is going to be a real issue for the economy. Some say it could even cause a recession at some point. What is the worst case scenario if, in fact, we were to see prices come down substantially across the country? Well, I, I guess I don't buy your premise. It's a pretty unlikely possibility. We've never had a decline in house prices on a nationwide, nationwide basis. So what I think is more likely is that house prices will slow, maybe stabilize, might slow consumption spending a bit. I don't think it's going to drive the economy too far from its full employment path, though. Um, I'm hopeful that, and I'm confident, in fact, that the uh, bank regulators will, will pay close attention to the kinds of loans that are being made, making sure that underwriting is done right. Um, but I, I do think that this is mostly a localized problem and not something that's going to affect the national economy. So we expect moderate growth going forward. We believe that if the housing uh, sector begins to stabilize um, and if some of the inventory corrections that are still going on in manufacturing uh, begin to be completed, that there's a reasonable possibility that we'll see some strengthening of the economy sometime during the middle of the year. Our assessment is that uh, there's not much indication at this point that subprime mortgage issues have spread into uh, the broader mortgage market, which still seems to be healthy, um, and the lending uh, side of that still seems to be healthy. The global economy continues to be strong. Supported by solid economic growth abroad, U.S. exports should expand further in coming quarters. Overall, the U.S. economy appears likely to expand at a moderate pace over the second half of 2007, with growth then strengthening a bit in 2008, to a rate close to the economy's underlying trend. I am entirely sympathetic to the efforts of the Fed. You know, this is a very hard time, and, but you should know that uh, I'm biased because before he was demoted, um, Ben Bernanke was the chairman of the Princeton Economics Department. So, uh, <laughs> um, uh, <coughs> okay. Um, how does all this end? That's the, that's the interesting question. First question is, you know, is this going to mean a recession? And let me say with great certainty, I don't know. Um, and nobody knows. Peter Schiff, he's president of Euro Pacific Capital. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. Peter, I want to start with you. Although there are more and more people saying that the U.S. economy will be in a recession next year, it is still a minority position. Why do you think that a recession is coming? Just how bad is it going to be? I think it's going to be pretty bad, and whether it starts in 07 or 08, I think, is immaterial. And I also think it's going to last not just for quarters, but for years. See, the basic problem with the U.S. economy is we have too much uh, consumption and, and borrowing and not enough production and savings. And what's going to happen is the American consumer is basically going to stop consuming and start rebuilding his savings, especially when he sees his home equity evaporate. And when you have the economy 70 percent consumption, you can't address those imbalances without a recession. You know, rather than the recession being resisted, it should really be embraced because the disease is all this debt finance consumption. Huh. The cure is that we stop consuming and start saving and producing again, and that's a recession. And sometimes, you know, medicine tastes bad, but you've got to swallow it. Art Laffer, you hear him? He says the consumer is going to slow down in order to rebuild the savings. And you know that two-thirds of the American economy is driven by the consumer. Do you believe that? No, I don't believe any of it whatsoever, Michelle. Excuse me. But, you know, what he's saying is that savings is way down in this country, but wealth has risen dramatically. The United States economy has never been better shape. There is no tax increase coming in the next couple of years. Monetary policy is spectacular. We have freer trade than ever before. And not only that, but there are no incomes policies things here. I, I think Peter is just totally off base, and I don't think it's going to be... 
I mean, I, I just don't know where he's getting his stuff. The well, one of us, is, one of us is off base, but it's, it's definitely not me. I mean, it's not wealth that's increased in the last few years. We haven't inc increased our productive capacity. All that's increased is the paper values of our stocks and real estate. But that's not real wealth, no more than the NASDAQ was wealth. When, when you see the stock market come down and the real estate bubble burst, all that phony wealth is going to evaporate, and all well, that's going to be left is all the debt that we accumulated to foreigners. Peter, uh, I'm going to take a that. bet with you on this one. I'll, I'll bet you a penny on this one that if you'll sign a letter saying that if you're wrong, you'll, you'll sign a letter that you were wrong to me in this, but you're just way off base. There is nothing out there that tells us we're going to have a nice slowdown, but it's not going to be a All right, crash. let me ask you this. I'll bet you a lot more than a penny. Big question. Will homes be worth more or less in 2007? Tom, what do you think? You're going to see uh, prices go up about 10%. Here's why. Because you're going to come into a regular, normal market, and a regular, normal market, that's about what kind of appreciation you get. The is pr home prices up 10% <laughs> in the coming year. Peter, what do you say? Well, today's home prices are completely unsustainable. They were bid up to these artificial heights by a combination of temporarily low adjustable rate mortgage payments, by a complete you know, absence of any lending standards, and by speculative buying. And what's going to happen in 2007 is a lot of these artificially low arm payments are going to re be reset upward. You're going to start to see uh, both the government and the lenders <coughs> reimposing lending standards and tightening up on credit. And you're going to see a lot of the speculative buyers turn into sellers. And these sky high real estate prices are going to come crashing back down to earth. I, I, first of all, I have no idea what Peter Schiff is talking about. I agree with Tom. I think they're going to be up probably up to about 10%. What artificial lending standard are you talking about? What's word to Peter? Go Most first. of the profits that people have in real estate are going to vanish, just like the profits in the, in, the, in the dot coms <laughs> in 1999 2000. It's a fantasy. People can't sell their house. The inventories are exploding all over the country. Houses are on the market for six months. A year, there's no bidders. So, uh, the price right. is going to fall through the floor. You guys are deluding yourself. We heard it. So what's average? We heard it loud and clear from all of our panelists. We thank you very much. Subprime is tiny. Subprime is a tiny, tiny it, blip. It's not <laughs> tiny, and again, it's not just subprime. It's the entire mortgage market, right? Every all right. Well, Tracy, you're, you're disagreeing. With simply to wrong. Well, point. you're simply wrong about that. No, I'm not. Um, we have That's a more efficient true. economy. We have yes. Even we don't if, have even a more efficient economy. Yes, we do. We have a bubble economy. We're borrowing from abroad to consume. That's not efficiency. What do you think gold is saying? Well, you know, first of all, you just described the U.S. market as being bulletproof, and I think gold is telling us that it's about to get shot full of holes. I also, I think, I, I might uh, just uh, maybe take a little issue with uh, the other uh, yeah. guest here. I mean, in that, I mean, the whole concept of the, the, this U.S. economy is teetering on recession. Um, you know, with all due respect, I think is is, is absurd. Uh, it's not because, absurd. Because uh, it, it's completely absurd. Well, because look at the, the stock look market. At the excuse me, sir. Let me let me finish. Um, I think that uh, stock market, generally speaking, does not give false positives uh, or, or false well, negatives on recession. Where were you in 1999? In 2000, the stock market doesn't give false signals. Well, of course, the it does. multiple. Well, how, how are the consumers served by having the value of their money, the value of their wages, and their savings diminished? I don't think that that has any impact. The Fed doesn't have any impact on that at all. I of mean, course, it does. Two things Those who aren't familiar with you, this has been your prediction for how many decades now? Well, not not decades, but it's certainly been my my prediction for the last seven or eight years, and mm. I've been dead on right. You you have? Sure. Look what's happened since 2000. So I think as more and more people are starting to see that Wall Street is conning them, you know, and hey, if these guys can be so wrong about Enron, so wrong about WorldCom, so wrong about, wrong about Cisco or any of these companies that were so heavily touted, why can't they be wrong about the whole thing, about, their, about what they're saying about the economy, about what they're saying about the market? And they are wrong. Don't believe the, the propaganda, and that's what it is. When you're listening to an analyst on a lot of these popular financial right. shows, um, are these are the mainstream Wall Street firms? You're not getting investment advice. You're getting propaganda. The failed policy and, and, and it's not uh, it's not working at all. And we don't change anything. We, if we got in this trouble because we had low interest rates, getting businessmen and savers to do the wrong thing, just doing more of the wrong thing continuously, I can't see how this is going to be helpful. My question to you, Mr. Chairman, is this. Um, what will it take for you to say to yourself, um, could I be wrong? You know, what if I'm mistaken? You know, uh, how long is this going to go on? Nine trillion dollars? What if, say, in five years from now, we're in a deep, deep slump with 
your definition of inflation, what if we have high prices going and the economy is very, very weak and unemployment is high? Would you say to yourself then, boy, maybe I really messed up. Maybe I was on the wrong track. Maybe the free market people were right. Maybe Keynes was wrong. Would you ever consider that or are you